again fed a batch fed batch and continuous fermentation and in this video I'm going to talk about a lot of uh, technical pointers uh, that I didn't discuss in my previous video and uh, so let's start with the so as you know the, it's a cascade of agitation airflow and oxygen the deer control control uses a cascade of agitation air airflow and oxygen flow by setting a DO cascade so here is agitation airflow oxygen flow so they first uh, do 300 then they ramp up the agitation to 1200 and that gives you 50% output then the then there then they increase the set point in the second cascade uh, which is right here as you can see uh, yeah so this is the second cascade and here they go from 0, zero to 3 right 0 to 3 um, that's part of their second cascade and then they go from 0 to 100 they ramp up the oxygen comes in finally from 65 to 100 percent and then it stays uh, like that so by doing that uh, the control station automatically adjust the assigned process loops to maintain the DO level at a specific set point. In this study we set a cascade to maintain the DO, per, DO at 30% uh, as shown below for DO output range below 0 to 100. Since acids are produced during E. coli fermentation the only prepared 25% volume to volume ammonium hydroxide solution as the base for pH control uh, NaOH for each run one liter uh, base solution was prepared and sterilized through 0.2 micrometer membrane filtration we used feed lines made of silicon for liquid addition to the bioreactor via the system's pumps for base addition we added a section of far mad tubing between silicon tubing connections and fitted into the peristaltic pump on the bioflow 3 to 20 so here you can see the tubing etc and then We also prepared an sterilized 100 ml 10% volume per volume antifoam uh, 204 solution to add uh, to add to the ongoing fermentation when needed as a success excessive antifoam may reduce an oxygen transfer rate and affect microbial growth in all the runs presented in the study the 0.3% volume per volume antifoam added to at the beginning of medium preparation were sufficient to control foaming throughout the entire culture so no additional antifoam was added during the actual run So here they're explaining, I don't know, they 
made 10% volume per volume and deformed to a four solution and then in all the run presented the use 0.03% antiform added at the beginning and that was sufficient to control foaming throughout the entire culture so no addition of antiform was added during the actual run collection of addition and harvest bottles the fermenter and addition and harvest bottles can be connected under a septic condition for example in a laminar airflow cabinet if you have bottles mounted at the base of the vessel you can also autoclave them with the vessel without detaching the tubing from the head plate alternatively tubing can be connected outside a laminar airflow cabinet using a tube welder we did all tubing connections in the study by using SCD2 sterile tubing welders from Termo BCT. Uh, the welding was carried out at temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius for sterility maintenance to be welded. Tubing needs to be made of weldable material like C flex or needs to be extended with a weldable connector. So this is tube welding. So they're just explaining how they welded their connections uh, of addition and harvest bottles. If you have bottles mounted at the base of vessel, you can also articulate them with the vessel without detaching their tubing from the head plate. Alternatively, tubing can be connected outside a laminar airflow cabinet using a tube welder. Vessel setup and sterilization. We used a pH redox ISM sensor. 12 millimeter diameter with 225 millimeter insertion depth for pH monitoring and an analog photographic DO sensor 12 millimeter diameter with 220 millimeter insertion depth for dissolved oxygen monitoring. Uh, the two sensor will install on the head plate. <clears throat> so this is uh, the gas inlet filter this is swabbing sampling port from swabbable valve harvest port uh, this is the liquid addition port uh, with lure lock connection 
this is DO sensor, pH sensor, uh, DO sensor, pH sensor, baffle, schooling finger, exhaust gas filter, exhaust condenser. Oh my goodness, so, so this is done, this is done, and then figure four shows the setup of bio BLU 3F single use vessel. It's a head plate has four PG 13.5 ports, which can be used for installing DO and pH sensors, stainless steel cooling fingers, and more. In addition, there are one harvest tube, one sample port, one thermal well, two ports of, for overlay liquid addition, one port for submerged liquid addition, one gas inlet with filter, one exhaust with two filters, one additional exhaust for pressure release during autoclaving, and four baffles. Sensor calibration. We calibrated the pH sensor outside of the vessel before sterilization following the two-point calibration method. We use a buffer at pH 7.00 to set zero and a buffer at pH 4.00 to set a span. We calibrated the DO sensor inside the vessel after sterilization just before the inoculation. Before vessel assembly, we filled the sensor through its cap with fresh electrolyte solution that was separated from the medium by a permeable membrane at, at the tip. Six hour sensor polarization was accomplished by connecting the sensor with the control station, which provided a voltage to establish an anode and a cathode with the, within its sensor.
the growth curve for a batch uh, oh boy feeding a strategy feeding a strategy um, for a fat batch continued fermentation and nutrient feeding and broth harvest were carried out following a preset time profile of feed a uh, pump speed this can be achieved in the time profile setting and the cascade to a desi designated pump for time duration calculation EFT uh, elapsed fermentation time was initiated at annihilation.
Fried batch fermentation had the highest volumetric biomass. Uh, among all culture modes, we also calculated the total glucose consumption and biomass yield on glucose for a more thorough comparison among batch fermentation in chemically defined medium, fat batch, and continuous fermentation. The biomass yield on glucose shows the effectiveness of each culture method on converting glucose into bacterial biomass and such effectiveness is an important factor to consider both technically and economically when evaluating a fermentation process. According to Table 7, the total glucose consumption and fat batch in continuous fermentation was 2.6 to 3-fold higher than in batch fermentation. Uh, when comparing biomass yield on glucose, fat batch was the highest and batch fermentation with chemically defined medium was only 11% less, indicating its effective glucose to biomass conversion. Fred Badge. Badge fermentation in complex medium lasted for only nine hours. 
with the lowest biomass accumulation and the maximum ODU is 11. Batch fermentation and chemically defined medium fat batch and container fermentations had similar du similar durations between 11 and 12.5. Batch, uh, batch fermentation and chemically defined medium had the longest lag phase before the What the heck is this? Continue this, this thing. Edit. 